you asked. People of the state of Michigan versus Rachel Nylinger. This is file 2023372. Ms. Nylinger is here, appearing from the jail by video with her attorney, Ms. Yancey. And Mr. Gabriel is the prosecuting attorney. We're here today for sentencing on um, her case. She pled to the charge of possession of methamphetamine, which is a felony punishable by up to 10 years in the Department of Corrections. We had corrected the uh, plea agreement uh, portion of the report last time we were here to indicate that she would like to be considered for swift and sure sanctions probation. We adjourned it from the March 19th date for her to be assessed. She has since been assessed and been found qualified for the program. So we're back here today for sentencing. Ms. Yancey, does uh, Ms. Nylinger have any objection to continuing on video today? No, she does not, Your Honor. All right, so in terms of corrections to the pre-sentence report, we had indicated that the sentencing date should, have been, should be now uh, listed as May 10th, 2021, that Ms. Yancey is the attorney, that you know under the plea agreement it would be that she would like to be considered for swift and sure sanctions probation. That on page two, jail credit uh, from 1-12-2021 to 5-10-2021 is 118 days. So total jail credit's 123. And then going to the uh, criminal history portion, uh, Ms. Martin, the supervisor of the Department of Corrections looked up online what the status of the cases were and we have corrections to adult record 11 of 16, which had indicated there was a pending warrant out of Kalamazoo. And that should indicate that that was resolved this morning. She was sentenced to 129 days, credit 129 days, and that is all done. And then number 13 of 16 was Nolly by the Kalamazoo County Prosecutor's Office on April 29th, I'm sorry, 28th. And then number 14, that case was nollied also by the Kalamazoo Prosecutor's Office on April 28th. And then 15 of 16, it should show that it's set for hearing tomorrow in Kalamazoo County at 9.30 a.m. All right, so with that, are there any other additions, corrections, or deletions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Gabriel? None. Okay. In terms of scoring, The agent recommends 42, level D, offense variable 11, level 2, 5 to 23 guideline range. I concur, Your Honor. Yeah, no dispute with the sentencing, Your Honor. All right. She's now been found qualified for the Swift and Sure Sanctions Probation Program. So that would be the recommendation. What else would you like to add, Ms. Yancey? I believe that's all, Your Honor. I had an opportunity to speak to uh, Ms. Neidlinger and she wishes to be a part of this program and to make a change in her life. All right, Ms. Neidlinger, what would you like to add? Um, I would just like to say that I'm very thankful to be given this opportunity and I'm gonna take this program very serious. I've had to time, some time to really sober up and I'm eager to start my new life. I got my Vivitrol shot last week so I just want to say thank you for giving me this opportunity. Good, thank you. Mr. Gabriel? Yes, court to follow the recommendation, Your Honor. Thank you. 
So, Ms. Nanlier, not only did you resolve this case, but apparently it helped you in your cases in Kalamazoo for them to know that you're entering into this program. So resolve those cases too. Um, so that's good and that you're getting all these cases behind you and ready to move on. Uh, as you can yes. see, there's a lot of people on the screen with us right now and this is the team approach to the Swift Insure Sanctions Probation Program that we use. In a lot of courts, uh, it's just, the, it's, it's, it goes by its name, Swift Insure Sanctions. So all they do in other counties, a lot of the times is just concentrate on the sanctions part. Uh, but we've never done that. We've taken cases that don't fit necessarily the drug court or aren't qualified for the drug court. And we use Swift Insure to provide treatment, counseling, programming to, to lower your risk of recidivism so that you don't find yourself in that seat again and the public doesn't have to risk you being out committing more crimes. That's the whole value of this program. It's a different program that allows us to devote resources to an individual defendant far greater than what a normal probation can do. And these are for people that have struggled on probation in the past and have not had a lot of success. What it does is it basically removes every excuse that you've had for failure in other probations by providing you treatment, by providing you programs, but also providing you resources, peer supports, transportation, counseling, a case manager, uh, contact, frequent contact with your agent, uh, the probation center, our treatment providers, uh, the program directors. Uh, it's a total team approach where they meet and they talk about you on a regular basis as to what you need, what, you, what you're what you working on, what you are struggling with and how to better do it. So, whereas before a general probation, you'd have your agent who would refer you out for treatments and programs and make suggestions, but then you would run into struggles of only seeing them once a month and not being able to make a class and then missing out and then all the rest. So it really, like I said, it takes care of uh, all your excuses uh, or not excuses, but hurdles that you'd have to face that cause difficulty in completing them before. It gives you those tools to take those away. Okay. So okay. it is a very limited, but it's extremely special probation. And again, if you don't follow through on it, you understand that there are sanctions involved and they are as part of the program, they're different than a normal probation and that they're swift and sure. So again, you know, if you if you violate a probation order, you'll be brought right in front of me um, as soon as possible to talk about it. And then there could be a sanction involved of jail or uh, being taken to jail right away if it's serious enough. So uh, that's the kind of thing that we don't stress as far as the, the goal of the program. The goal of the program is you're lowering your recidivism. Uh, but we have everyone here. So I'm going to sentence you, and then I'll introduce you to everybody, and then we'll go from there. Um, so sentence of the court is that you uh, be placed on Swift Insure Sanctions probation for two years, subject to terms of probation that are listed. Um, $68 state cost, $130 crime victims assessment, and uh, you are going to do uh, 123 days jail credit, 123 days. Then you're to be released only to the staff of the Twin County Probation Center, where you shall still complete the center program. Any violation of center rules result in probation violation return to jail. Uh, your license will be suspended for one year, two months no driving, 10 months restricted, but that's only through October 1st when that law changes. And I won't order any additional court costs, fines, or attorney's fees. The goal of this is your rehabilitation. I don't want to put more hurdles for you to have to cover uh, in front of you. The goal is your treatment and dealing with this issue. So, uh, Ms. Yancey explained to you the process of, uh, or what's involved in Swift Insure, I assume, and so did, I don't know who did your assessment, whether it was Mr. James or Dr. House, uh, but, uh, you were told what's expected of you out of this program and, and what's going to be demanded of you. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, good. 
All right, so let's uh, run around the room and, and uh, introduce everybody so that you know and put a face with the name. Uh, first of all, is Mr. James. He's a treatment provider. He's also assisting Dr. Howes and managing the program when she can't be here. Uh, Clarence? Hey, Rachel, how's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. So I believe you did your assessment with Tara, correct? Yes, I did. So Tara's going to also reach out to you to get you started in your treatment services, okay? Okay. Nope. So we're going to connect you with Tara. And also we're going to introduce Amy in a minute. She's going to be your case manager. All right? So okay. congratulations and welcome to the program. And if Dr. House was Thank here you. today, there's one thing you have to change, and that's everything, okay? So just be open okay. and in everything you do. We're here to help support you, okay? Okay, thank you. So you already met Ms. Yancey and she is the uh, attorney for the program, for the defendants in the program. And then Mr. Gabriel is here today as the prosecutor, but we also have Josh Robert, part of the team as a prosecutor. Um, and so they are the attorneys involved in the case, but they're all part of the team. And then we have, uh, let's go down through the Department of Corrections. We have Lisa Martin, who is the supervisor of our county probation and parole agents. And then we have uh, Gina Leister, who is one of the agents, and Amanda Coney, who is one of the agents. And I don't know who's going to be your agent exactly just yet. I am. Gina is. So Gina is your agent. Have you ever had Gina as an agent before? No, I have not. Okay, well, she's uh, both her and Amanda work in the specialty courts and they work in these programs. Uh, and Lisa is the supervisor and she's at all of our meetings and staffings, okay? Okay. All right, then we have Kevin Butler, who is the director of the uh, Twin County. Well, he's, what exactly is your title at Twin County? I know Tom's. Tom's the executive director. I'm the program director. Program director. Right. So uh, Kevin's the one that does all the work and Tom fills out all the forms is, is basically it. Um, but he will, yeah, he will be making arrangements for you to be brought over. Now we're told that you have court in Kalamazoo tomorrow morning at 930. So we're going to have you yeah. brought over sometime after that so you don't miss your court date on Zoom with Kalamazoo County, okay? Okay. And hopefully the GL remembers that you got caught at 9.30 also. They've been pretty good. <laughs> right, I'll good. remind them. <laughs> All right, yeah, do that. Okay. And uh, let's see, then we have uh, case manager, um, a man, uh, Kim Pete and uh, Amy Kern. Go ahead. Who's going to be uh, Rachel's? Is it Amy? Yes, Your Honor, it will be Amy. Yeah, okay. So... Amy, go ahead and explain what your job as case manager is, would you? Hi, Rachel. So as case manager, um, do you want her, me to say how I got here or what I'm going to do? No, just what you're going to what you're okay. going to do and provide support for. Okay, so as your case manager, I'll be getting a, getting a hold of you after you get um, entered into the center. And uh, basically, uh, we'll sit down and I'll find out from you what you need and we'll put like a like a plan together on how to take care of those needs and barriers for you. And then I relay information um, back to the team to advocate for you. Okay. All right. And then uh, we have Sarah Webb and Tara Smith. Now you've met Ms. Smith. She did your assessment. But we have Sarah Webb and Tara Smith who are treatment providers. They're two of the treatment providers in our program and they provide treatment for all kinds of things from substance abuse to relationship to other issues that you need help with uh, or codependency those kinds of things so who wants to go first i'll start uh, okay rachel <laughs> rachel hi i'm sarah webb um you did meet tara um when you did your initial assessment so i will be following up with you um you're going to probably join my women's group and um and then some other services that I participate with too. And so I'll get to meet you pretty quick. After you get to the center, we'll get uh, your case manager, Amy, will get you all scheduled and, and, and let you know what the expectations are for joining that. So I'm a, one of the treatment providers and we'll get to know each other throughout your program. 
And Tara also does that too. Go ahead, Tara. Yep, so we've met, but we'll continue to meet. And as soon as you get um, placed at the center, I'll reach out to you and we'll get an assessment going so you can jump into treatment right away. So Sarah and I will work really close and fast to get you going as quick as we can. Okay. And what we also have in our county through the, our system is uh, peer supports. And we have a variety of those. Peer supports are people that have experienced the same thing you are going through. They've been in the same position you've been in. And they, uh, they're they there and they provide transports, but they also provide somebody to talk to so that uh, you, you don't think that, geez, these people don't know where I'm coming from. Uh, they've all been doing this um, for a number of years. We've had our Swift Insure program for a number of years and uh, they all have expertise. But even then you think book knowledge versus somebody that can appreciate where I've been. Well, that's what the peer supports come in uh, and they can talk to them and they can do it. And so who can explain to her just the value of a peer support and, and what they can and can't do uh, to help you? I don't want you to be, you know, believe that you know, the SWIFT, uh, the, the peer supports will never keep a secret from us. But at the same time, you know, that 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 honesty and that knowledge that they'll be there to help you is is a commitment that they have from their own struggles that they went through. Who wants to who wants to pick up on that? I would like Amy to talk about that, Judge. All right. Um, so how I got to be a case manager was a series of steps. And where it all began was I was a participant in Cass County Drug Court. I graduated in 2014 and I continued to live the same lifestyle that I lived during drug court which helped me maintain um, a strong, healthy uh, recovery. So as a peer, then I started working as a peer support because I had that shared lived experience for Cass County and St. Joe County. As a peer support, um, we spend time together. Uh, we would transport you um, to approve you know, locations that you need for medical, dental, um, things that are to help build up your recovery. Um, and because we've had that, a similar shared experience, um, we can actually share parts of our story of how we coped with it and how we got through it and what we were empowered by. So we're just kind of here to walk alongside you on your journey. Um, we don't give you wisdom. We don't tell you what to do. We don't keep secrets um, because that's part of my personal recovery is I don't keep secrets and I'm always trying to be the honest and integrity that um, they expect from me but we do um, have that time that we can spend with you just, you know, if you need to vent or, you know, you're frustrated or concerned or don't understand something, we're just kind of there to walk alongside you and help you and support you. All right. Thank you. And uh, did I miss anything then, Clarence? I don't believe so, Judge. Okay. Well, what I want to say to you and everyone else is SWIFT Insure is such a valuable part of this court. We've had it for... I don't know if it's 10 years yet, but it sure feels like it. Uh, it pre, uh, predates our drug court, uh, and we model it on our a drug court. It, we used to call it drug court light because we couldn't call it a drug court, but that's the way we operate it here, and that's the value of it. And we've had great success, and unfortunately, the Michigan House of Representatives is talking about cutting this program completely because one of the representatives doesn't believe in it. I would just, I would encourage anybody watching to reach out to whoever their representative is and say that, you know, the misconception that this is nothing but probation with sanctions is wrong. Uh, that it, we provide all kinds of treatment and programs uh, and that if they're operating it just like probation, then it won't work, but we don't do it that way. Uh, and uh, we look forward to it continuing and I hope it does, uh, but uh, that'll be it. So Rachel, uh, I don't, like in drug court, I see everybody once a week. Here, I don't see you unless you violate, except for the end of the month, where then I see you if you're gonna phase up and we have a, although we don't have to, we have a little celebration for everybody that's going to phase up. And so uh, we see you once a month and we talk once a month on that. So we will see you as regularly as drug court. I would encourage you to uh, talk to Amy when she calls you and, and have all your questions that you have. There's no such thing as a bad question. Make sure you raise them all. 
Um, I forgot to say also, Kevin's, you know, it's not like Kevin runs the place himself. He's got a team. So you'll have a case manager there at Twin County and a bunch of staff at Twin County that'll be there. And then you have the people at DRC that also work and, and help monitor. Uh, but then also the sheriff's part of the team too. And so his staff uh, is also there. And so it's a real team effect. All right, so uh, you'll get to the center tomorrow after you're done with your Kalamazoo case and we'll start in and I look forward to you getting done with this. Now, usually now, I tell people that, you know, at the halfway point, you can finish this and get off probation, but that's not the case in Swift and Sure. It's a, it's a, the soonest she can get through all the phases, Clarence, is how long in Swift and Sure? 15 to 24 months, Your Honor. It's 15 to 24 months of a program. So it's not your normal probation that you can, you know, get two years probation, get off in a year. You, you can't get through it that quick, but uh, you can get as soon as 15 months. So just work hard at it and we'll, we'll see you, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, good, thank you very much. And with that, I'm gonna go off the air and we're gonna close it